Introduction to Linux Part 2. In this video we're going to continue our introduction to Linux and we'll talk about the man pages and the info pages and they're just like an online manual. It's a great reference resource, it's a great way to learn, it's a great way to go back if you forget something and just uh, get that little piece of information quickly off the, off the computer. You don't even have to leave your computer, you can just do it right, right in front of you. Um, and then we'll talk about the directory structure of Linux, sort of like how things are organized and then I'll just give you some other tidbits to make your life on a Linux system a little easier. All right, so let's get started and we'll look at the man pages and the info pages. There's a few ways to get information about commands in Linux and the options for those commands and the various uh, configuration files and what they control. And two of the most popular ways are the man pages and the info pages. In some sense, the info pages are a newer version of the man pages, but really it's just like the info pages are just organized differently. Okay. Uh, occasionally you will see a man page though that says uh, this man page is no longer being maintained, refer to the info page, and then obviously in that case you should refer to the info page for that. But really, like I said, they're just organized, it's the same information organized differently, and they both have their use. So let's look at both of them. All right, so first we'll look at the man page for something. So the way that you look at the man page for some command, you say man, you follow that by a space, and then you give the command that you want to uh, get the man page for. Okay, and man here just stands for manual, right? So, so we take the man, we do a man page on ls, and I hit enter, and now I'm in the man page for ls, and and it has like a, a little header here that says what the name of the command is, a brief you know explanation of the command, and then there's like a synopsis here that says you know how do you use the command? You put the options first, and then you put the file or directory that you're going to list second. All right, but it also look down here. It says list information about the files, the current directory by default. So if I don't specify a file or a directory to list here, then it's just going to list the contents of my current directory. All right, and and that's the way we've done it so far, right? We've just done ls at the command line, and it's listed the contents of our current directory. Now there's some options for ls down here. We see like the minus a option, minus capital A option, minus b option, and so on. And and you know these just go down the page here. We're only seeing the first page of of this man page for ls, and we'll page down in a second. Uh, first, let's talk about the minus A option here. This is a pretty useful option for LS. Um, alternatively, you could say minus minus all. You can see that there. This is a little bit more descriptive. Typically, I'll do these options, though, the short options. And when I pull out a new one for some command, I'll try and explain that to you, what it's for. If, if somehow I, I brush over that and I forget, then you know, just pull up the man page for it and look at that option to see exactly what it does. You can see here from the description, it says, do not hide entries starting with a star. Okay, or starting with a period, sorry. So, so you might, if you're not familiar with Linux, you might say, well, you know, what files start with a period? And, you know, the files that start with a period typically are user configuration files in your home directory. Okay, so if, when we get out of the screen here, we'll do an ls minus a, and you can see uh, all those files that start with a period. And, you know, they're user config files for various things, for your Windows stuff, for your, you know, your bash shell and things. And, and really, um, you know, what they are is there are files that you don't really want to see all the time. That's why they're typically hidden. But if you do want to see them, you have to give the minus A option to LS. You, you want to know where user configuration files are, but you want, don't want them to get in the way all the time. Okay? So, so there's our first page of the LS man page. To see the m more of this, you just hit spacebar. Okay? And I'm, and I'm paging down. If I want to go back up, I hit the B key. And now you can see I'm going back up. I'll hit the space bar then I'll go down a little bit. And let's look at one more option here, the minus L option. And that for, for that option, we get a long listing. So what that means is we get all sorts of information about the files and the directories that, that we're listing, like uh, the last modification date, the size, um, the owner, and, and various things like that. And again, we'll do an LS minus L when we get out of this screen. Okay, so that's that's what the man page looks like. All the various options are out here. If we keep paging down, you'll see there's just tons and tons of options for LS. Okay, uh, you can see the authors down here. If you have bugs to, that you want to report, that's where you go. Uh, there's like a little copyright, and and you know here's the full documentation for LS is maintained as a tech info manual. The info and LS programs are properly installed at your site. Info LS. Okay, and so you know they're saying right here that the full documentation is is, a, is as an info page. So let's do the info page for this, and we'll see how that differs as well. So I'll I'll quit out of here with a Q, and now I'm out of the man page. Um, let's do a couple ls commands first, and then we'll go and look at the info page. 
So let's do the ls uh, command, and we can see you know what files are in our directory. Then we'll do the ls minus a command, and you'll see a whole bunch more files come up, right? I haven't changed directories. All those files up here, C and hold and Linux syllabus, they're all in here. There's C, there's hold, there's Linux syllabus, right? But but there's a whole bunch more files, and all the ones you know other files all start with a period. Okay, and these are all user config files. They're preferences or they're, you know, like this one, the dot bash history. Remember when I showed you the history, how you could look at your previous commands by hitting the up arrow like this, right? Well, well all those commands um, are, are stored in the dot bash history file. So that's what that's for. Uh, the dot gnome file. Actually, this is a directory full of configuration files for your gnome desktop environment. Okay, so uh, th that's what all these dot files are. They're either config files or directories full of configuration files for various for various things that are that are at the user level. These aren't system config files. These just control you know your personal configuration of the system. Okay, of of your experience on the system. All right, so that's the ls minus a command. Let's do an ls minus l command now, and then we'll see what that does. So ls minus l. Uh, now notice, like here, I did an ls, and it's got the c hold Linux syllabus mail scripts, and that's what's down here: c hold Linux syllabus mail scripts. Okay, so they're all listed down the side here, and each one's got a full row of information about it. Okay, over here, this says that it's a directory. These are the privileges of who can read and write it. Uh, this is the owners of the file. This is the size of the file, the last modification date, and so on. Okay, so you know that's that. Like I said, that's a lot of information in there, and we'll talk a lot more about all these permissions and ownership and stuff, and like you know, five or eight videos down the road. Okay, so so don't worry too much about that now. But but that's how you get the long listing, and you can always combine options. Like if I wanted to do you know a long listing of all these things, I could do um, ls minus al. Now that's going to be a lot of information that's going to scroll off the screen, but I'll hit enter anyway just so you can see. Again, we're just getting long listings of everything, including the dot files. All right, so that's the ls command. Now let's go ahead and look at the info page for ls. Now let's pull the info page up on a particular command. We might as well just do the ls command again so that we can compare and contrast info pages and man pages. So I'll hit enter here, and now I'm in the info page for the ls command. And you might see right off the bat here that there's a more of an English language description up front about what the command does, what the various options are, and what the options will do. Just, just an, a gen, like I said, general English language description of that. And that's nice for new users. It gives you more of a description, more of a feel of what the command does, without having to get technical right away and start looking at all the various options. All right, and then you can hit spacebar to page down in an info page, just like a man page. You can also use the arrow keys to go up and down. And the the thing that really differentiates info pages from man pages is this section at the bottom here with all these asterisks that start the line. And really, what, what these are is these are like subcategories of the info page. So they're, they're separate pages of text, and they're just classified by various categories. So let's highlight one of these. Let me move my cursor right over this one that says which files are listed. And I'll hit enter here. And now I go to a different page. It's a subsection called which files are listed. And basically, every option in, these, in this section alters which files are listed by the ls command. You can see the minus a option is in there, and we already know what the minus a option for ls does. It lists the files that start with a period, and you know that alters which files are listed. So that's why it's in this section. Okay, so so just like every other option in this in this section, it will alter which files are listed. Now to go back a level, you hit the L key, and now you go back one level to where we were just before. Uh, let me highlight a different one here. Let's use the arrow key to go down one, and let's uh, highlight this one, what information is listed, and again, we'll hit enter, and now we go to the subsection, what information is listed. Again, we can page down with the space bar to see all the various options that alter the, the information listed by LS, and you can see in here that the minus L option is in this section. And we know what it does. It, it displays more information than the plain old ls command. That's why it's in the section on what information is listed. N now that I've just thought about it, let me show you one more thing about the info page, what to do in the info page, and then we'll go and do this in the man page. Let me show you how to search through these documents. So if you hit control s in an info page, you get this thing down here that says I search. And basically, it's just waiting for you to type in some word, and then it's going to find that word for you in this page. So let me type the word long there. So I type the word long, and then it finds this instance of the word long. And that's the first instance of the word long after the placement of my cursor, which used to be right here. 
Then I hit control S again, and I go to the next instance of the word long. I hit control S again, I go to the next instance, and so on. Okay? And then when I want to stop the searching, I just hit control G, and then you can see I've quit the searching. And now I can just hit Q to quit out of the info page. All right? So that's how you search through an info page, and that's actually just how you search through an Emacs document as well, because the info page is really just an Emacs editor showing you that information. All right, so, so hitting Control-S searches through an info page.